While the preferred method for programming the TrackView controller is via the control port using RS-232, there is also a USB option. Make sure that your TrackView controller is turned off. Whether you are using the USB or serial port, load the CD into your CD-ROM drive before connecting either cable between your computer and the TrackView controller. Be sure to use only the USB or a serial cable. Do not connect both cables at one time to the controller. Power up the TrackView controller. If you are using USB, the computer will recognize and install the TrackView installer as a serial port. Identify which serial port is being used. With Windows XP, click on the Start tab. Select the Control Panel and double-click System. Click on the Hardware tab, then Device Manager. Double-click on Ports, COM, and LPT. Identify the COM port that you will be utilizing for communication to TrackView. Close all open windows that you are running on your computer. Browse to the CD-ROM and double-click TrackView Setup Install icon. Follow the instructions to install the TrackView Setup software. Once this is done, a TrackView Setup icon will appear on your desktop. Double-click on the icon. Note, if the software fails to load, select the proper COM port when the window pops up. The correct COM port settings are 9600 baud, 8-bit, one-stop, no parity. Software parameters for TrackView should automatically load. Before you start programming your controller, we suggest having two monitors to view both the reference and tracking camera video outputs at the same time. If that is not possible, you will need at least one monitor and switch between cameras as you set them up. You are now ready to begin programming the TrackView controller. Click on the Tracking tab at the top of the application window. At the bottom of the screen, you will notice a number of small windows below the Cancel and Close buttons. These windows correspond to the buttons on the front of the TrackView controller. Clicking on any of these buttons will change the setting on the front of the TrackView controller. If you press any of the buttons from the front of the controller, click between the buttons on the software application to update their status. Click on the Reference Camera frame, which should turn gray. If not, you may have a cabling problem between your computer and the controller. Check all connections and close the application and relaunch the application. With the reference camera video on your monitor, use the pan, tilt, and zoom controls in the middle of the page to move the camera so that the entire area to be tracked fills the screen. Once you have accomplished this, press the Save Reference Preset button on the screen. Click the Motion Mask tab, which will feed the default motion mask from the controller into the computer. In the upper left, under Mask Options, check the Show Motion Mask box. You should now see a thin set of black bars superimposed over the reference camera image on your monitor. The black bars indicate where no motion will be detected. This default setting will be adequate for most installations. However, adjustments can be made using either entire rows or block by block to either clear an area to detect motion or to set the mask for no motion detection. After making changes, you must apply the new mask by pressing the Apply Mask button. If using the default settings, go back to the Tracking tab and press on the Reference Camera frame. You may adjust the reference camera up and down so that the tracking area, the area not blocked on the screen, is approximately waist high for the presenter, providing this does not interfere with areas you do not want to detect motion. Save the reference preset again by pressing the Save Reference Preset button. Click on the tracking camera frame, then return to the Motion Mask tab. Uncheck the Show Motion Mask box. Note the left and right field of view on your monitor. It is suggested to place objects on the left and right sides of the reference camera field of view to make it easier to locate them for use later in the programming of the system. Go back to the tracking tab. The tracking camera frame should be highlighted in gray. Next, with the help of another person, have them stand in the presentation area to help adjust the tracking preset position, which should be knee-high to two feet above the presenter's head. Once you have properly framed the shot, press the Save Tracking Preset button. Move the tracking camera using the left button to move the camera until the center of the video image is on the left edge of the reference camera image, using the marker point you placed at the front of the room earlier. Then, press the Save Left Limit button. 
Using the right button, move the camera to the right until the center of the picture is on the right edge of the reference camera image, again using the marker point you placed at the front of the room earlier. Then press the Save Right Limit button. Next, click on the Room Setup tab. While viewing your reference camera video output with no motion in the presentation area, watch the video output from the reference camera for 30 seconds. This is to determine that no unwanted motion is detected or highlighted by the reference camera. Motion detection will show up as black lines or boxes on the screen. If you see lines or boxes on your TV monitor, the contrast under the Room Setup tab and Noise Filter under Advanced tab may need to be adjusted up or down, depending on the lighting and backdrop color. Before making adjustments to contrast or noise filter parameters, you will need to disable tracking by pressing the Tracking Disable button on the controller or in the software application. After making an adjustment, go back and confirm if motion is still being detected on the screen. Click on the Room Setup tab and confirm that the Learn Rate is set to 26 as a starting value. As with all other values, there are descriptions below each parameter that describe the impact of adjusting the values up or down. Click on the Advanced tab. Make sure that the initial settings are Minimum Move at 2, Noise Filter at 3, Minimum Target Height at 4, and Minimum Target Width should be set at 2, while Target Duration should be set at 4. Active target width at 2, and tracking position value set to 42. While viewing the reference camera, have another person walk back and forth through the presentation area. A black, four-corner box should appear on the screen, around the person and follow them as they move. Take a look at the tracking camera TV monitor to confirm that the camera is tracking properly. You may need to enable tracking if the disable tracking button is lit on the front of your controller. If you would like to adjust the camera speed up or down, go to the Room Setup tab. Increasing the camera tracking speed will create a more choppy camera movement. Decreasing the tracking speed will create a smoother camera movement, but may not be able to keep up with a fast-moving presenter. Once you have set your tracking speed, it is advised at this time to save your settings in the controller. Go to the Advanced tab and press the Backup button and name the file. Setting triggers is the next step in the programming process. The first step is to confirm on the front of the controller that the preset disable button is not lit and that the first step button is lit. Press the program button on the controller. Next, click on the tracking tab of the software application. Make sure that the tracking camera is highlighted and move it into position via the software controls. Activate either the MAT or IR sensor that you want to program for the preset camera position or press the designated preset button on the front of the controller. The location will be stored in memory. Repeat this process for all other MAT or IR sensor trigger devices. Once you have completed all programming of the system, turn off the program button on the front of the controller to deactivate the program mode. Make sure that no one triggers any other MATs or sensors while you have the system in program mode. Otherwise, an incorrect preset position may be stored in the controller. Setting up multi-step presets comes after you have programmed in your individual preset positions. To activate this mode, press the multi-step button and then the program button to activate the multi-step program mode. Next, move the camera into position via the software controls. Press the two preset buttons one after the other or activate the mats or IR sensors then press program again to save the multi-step position. Repeat this process for additional multi-step positions for up to a total of 10 multi-step presets on up to five trigger devices. When system setup is complete, you should back up the entire configuration you have programmed into the system one last time after checking all preset trigger functions and camera tracking. Do this by going to the advanced tab and click on the backup button. Save this as an alternate backup to the original that you had saved earlier. Once the backup is saved into memory, shut down the software application and disconnect the cable connected to the TrackView system. Double check all of the preset triggers and camera framing in all three modes to confirm that all presets and multi-step positions have been saved properly and that the tracking camera is tracking properly from one preset to another. If you have questions regarding the installation of TrackView components or programming the TrackView controller, call Vadio Technical Support at 
572-2011 or via email at support at vadio.com.